Hey everybody, it's Sean here from Shooty School. We have an exclusive interview with the two guys that can give us inspiration and insight with not only our tune track interests, but our creative and production workflows. First up, when not studying apocalyptic sorcery, Jacob Herman hails from his studio in Gothenburg, Sweden, with a clearly recognizable hard rock and metal client list. Jacob was not only the engineer behind Tune Track's big stage Easy X, but the Duality 1 and 2 Easy X's as well. More about Jacob Herman at topfloorstudios.com. Jacob, what services did I exclude? Workshops and clinics. It, it's something that I've always done. Apart from that, I mean, yeah, of course I work remotely. I mix people's albums. I go to the States and work a lot. I go all over Europe. Are you accepting like clients worldwide to send you tracks to mix? Yes, of course. If I don't have the, uh, the time, can they wait for it? If it's pressed for time, can I start the mix and have one of my assistants finish the mix, like do all the revisions and stuff like that. So there's, it's more about finding a solution for every situation, basically. Darby Todd is a monster touring and session drummer. His latest solo project, The Reality of Zeros and Ones, which you can pick up from his website, boasts an eclectic endeavor of originals and covers, collaborating with many equally robust musicians. I picked up the CD myself and highly recommend it. It just so happens Jacob Herman was the mixing engineer on this project. Learn more about Darby at DarbyTodd.com. Darby, what services of yours did I exclude? I do a bit of teaching as well, and that's 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 probably it. I've got kind of a, a, a small amount of people that tend to approach me because they like what I do. If you're if you're willing to work hard, I'm I'm more than happy to to teach. Darby, tell me something meaningful about your latest album, The Reality of Zeros and Ones. I've always wanted to make my own record. It's kind of in the back of my head. I've just gone, I, I feel like I have to do this. When the pandemic hit, I was like, right, I'm not going to let this get the better of me. I'm, and what started as, oh, I'll just knock something up for a bit of fun with some friends in two weeks, turned into a... Uh, 10 month affair, everyone sort of helped each other out during a, a bad period of life. When mixing library presets for any of your Easy X projects, do you use reference music? I've done this so long and with so many genres that I know what I want, I know what, it, what I want it to sound like. Um, I don't use reference mixes for the drum tones, but I did try it out with some songs that I had like on my computer that I've been working on everything everything from jazz to um, metal to what, whatever um, so that was my reference but I don't want to copy a drum sound and I don't want to emulate another sound I just want to go from scratch so no I there was no like referencing well when it comes to big stage easy X what genre of music are you imagining when you hear let's just say the main preset. When I do a sound, and it doesn't really matter the, the, the genre, I think that I want to make sure that everything you need is in there and you don't have to add. Like, you don't have to add any high-end. You can take away high-end if you want, that doesn't hurt the sound at all, but adding high-end to something that needs it more, it's, it's better that it's there and you take it away if you don't need it. Same thing with the compression is, well, I like that sound, but also the compression is there to take away if you want. And it's, it's in, in Easy Drummer 3, it's super easy. You can just lower the compression and in Superior Drummer, um, you can go in and really pinpoint the settings for the compression. If you understand these programs as a user, I think it's pretty obvious that you can easily undo what I've done in the presets. It's weird how many people have told me, without even hearing the pack and without trying it out themselves, people tell me that Big Stage, stage is unusable for certain genres. Right now I'm mixing a punk album. Not like super fast punk, but it's, it's, it's punky and it's kind of dirty. I would, I would say 25% of the, of the drum sound is uh, the Big Stage, because I wanted to try it out and I thought it would work really well but people are so obsessed about you know a certain room being unusable and it that's not how things work yeah you know these these have got huge room sounds because it's it's in a gigantic theater you know with mics you know up in the ceiling at the back of the room but you dial those room mics back or off and suddenly you've got a really nice tasty recorded kit that is very controllable and very usable and very musical. So it doesn't just have to be about that gigantic room. Uh, right. That's there and it's you'll never get that, that room sound anywhere else, 
but you can pull it out and suddenly it's, it's nice drums. I believe you have a separate slider fader for every single room mic. On some presets I've done, so you have control of all the different room mics. On some presets I've summed the room mics or some of the room mics into different groups. And on some kits, for instance, I have stereo room and mono room, but that's a certain blend and compression and EQ and saturation. Like there's a lot of things going on under the hood there. On some kits, I have different room, and that's the cool thing. That's the thing you cannot do with a real recording. I have different room mics for different drums. So on, I think, two presets, I have one room mic for the kick drum, one room mic for the snare, and one, you know, one set of room mics for uh, the toms. And they have different sounds and are treated differently, and it sounds, it sounds pretty interesting. But it, it doesn't sound like, oh, it sounds super weird. It's just something to bring out a certain flavor in that preset. That actually sounds pretty darn sneaky and cool and something I didn't even think that someone might be doing behind the scenes, so it's kind of fun to hear it. And the thing is, if you use Superior Drummer with these kits, you can do that yourself. You can make your own presets in that way. We're talking about the MIDI from the Big Stage Easy X, which I thought was personally fantastic. Uh, what was the inspiration behind the Tom-driven song Showstopper? Uh, is is that the the song which is like pretty much Tom's the whole way through? The power hand rarely went into an obvious yeah. power hand instrument. It was usually Tom's. I'll preface this with the the way I generally do the the MIDI because it, it could be very easy to get lost and confused. Is I. I think of a song that I like, that I feel suits the style, and I'll take the core groove from that song, and then from that, I forget about the song, and it, it slowly morphs away from it, and I come up with the, uh, the variations while I'm playing. Um, but that song was definitely based on Phil Collins. Are you playing to backing tracks that we never know anything about? Or no, is it just... No, no, Is it similar to Jacob when he's coming up with his EZX sounds is he's just doing it off the top of his head because he knows what he likes. He doesn't need an accompaniment. It's, 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 same here. I, I like, like I say, I give myself a bass groove that I want to work from. I go right here. This is what I want to play. I put the click on. I know I've got to record an eight bar groove. So I give myself a four, you know, a bar, two bar count in, play the groove, get to the end. Uh, fast forward it. I've, I've set up a template in Logic, so it's already written out. I've got like a, a header that says intros, and then I've got intro one, intro two, and as soon as I finished intro one, I just forward the cursor to the next one. And because I always know what I've played before, I can keep morphing forward. And that's the way I do it. Whereas if I was just trying to sit there and think, what can I play now? Uh, it would be really difficult and a really bad use of time. So uh, once I've got an idea of the first groove that I want to work from, I just continually morph forward. Besides Showstopper, were there mm -hmm. any other obvious influences for the other four MIDI songs you recorded for the Big Stage EZX? Completely. I mean, as, as I said earlier, I, in order to do this, I think of a song that's in the, the vibe of what I'm trying to do and I'll take the basic groove and then I'll work from that and morph it forward till it becomes something else. So, for instance, uh, one of the songs in that pack was based on uh, like a message in the bottle, in a bottle type vibe from the police. So when I was trying to come up with the grooves, I was thinking of that song and that allowed me to come up with the parts. Uh, I also stole from uh, Eat the Rich by Aerosmith. Um, and of course, I had to do Anything for Love by Meatloaf. I also based one song on Since I've Been Loving You by Led Zeppelin, because that's such a great feel and a great tune. I recognize every song you you, uh, you mentioned. Yeah. When you're doing these songs, are you painstakingly going after- Don't use that word. Oh. Don't use that word. <laughs> <laughs> Never painstakingly. Never painstakingly. Oh, that's tough love. because- With love. 
right. Well, that that basically answers the question because are, are you pursuing perfection, which is impossible, so it's a tough job for you, or are you just metaphorically sitting down and speaking your language and recording it? I'm I'm always trying to seek to be as good as I can be when I do anything on the drums. You know, that's 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 a given. Um, but what I've learned is to uh, you know, a good performance is a good performance. And while you might go, oh, but maybe I could have just got that hit, you know, slightly more on the beat. It doesn't matter as a whole. If the groove sounds good, it sounds good. So, yeah, I'm always striving to do it, you know, as great as I can. But, you know, bar me screwing up halfway through and going, wow, that's really out of time. I'm happy. When recording, is there a real time producer collaborating or barking at you? No. Nope. Uh, I'm left to my own devices and uh, uh, they, they trust me so much now that I just get an email saying, can you do this? And uh, we need it by this date. And uh, I, I get it done far quicker than they expected and send it straight back. And that's it. I don't have to run anything through anyone because they trust me implicitly to, to do what I'm asked. It's really cool. Regarding all the MIDI that I record, they'll they'll just uh, send me a, a treatment and say, we need, you know, 500 grooves in this style. Uh, can you get it done by such and such a date? 500. And, um, yeah, it's 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 hard. It's hard work. Um, and and then put that 500 over several packs, and you know you you try not to repeat yourself. And I'm I'm sure at points in certain packs you do repeat a fill or, or do something like that. But it, it doesn't matter. But um, I mean, you but are yeah. you are a very versatile drummer. But goddamn, that's yeah, that's it's, a lot. it's still crazy. It's hard. It's hard work, but no, it's great that I've um, I've never submitted a pack and they've come back to me and gone, oh, could you re-record song number three and number 15? You know, it's it's always been great. It's a nice way to work, just left to your own devices. Can you achieve this? Thank you. Sure, well, so that's good. in that specific case, you also have to be the right guy for the job, but it's fantastic. Completely, that- and I've proved myself that I can, you know, do pretty much whatever they do. I also, um, I'm responsible for recording a lot of the uh, uh, background music in some of like the making of videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, Toontrack come to me and say, oh, we need three songs in the style of, I don't know, uh, you know, Meshuggah, or we need three songs in 80s, indie pop or whatever and then i'll go and i'll get the relevant musicians in and we'll 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 make all the music that you hear in the backing of the videos and then sometimes jake will mix it for us as well imagine being in pre-production for the big stage easy x and then receiving the final product back from tune track was your energy and time justified did you get back what you were hoping for or even better Far better, far better. I mean, we always knew it was going to be it would be good, but I, I listened to the final thing and it, it, it blew my head. And then compound that with, I decided to shove it on a session I did the other day on V drums and uh, and the, the client I sent it to just said, God, that sounds better than any pack we've used so far. Uh, and they loved it. And that was kind of the validation that what we'd done was, uh, was awesome. And it is awesome, I really think it is. I love the EZX. Jacob? Yeah, I'm really happy with the outcome, of course. I think it sounds pretty spectacular, and I think it sounds very unique. I'm pretty confident that Toontrack has never put out anything like it before, and I haven't heard anything like in other software as well before. And the people that have knowledge about all different kinds of um, drum software uh, have confirmed that to me, which is, you know, it's a nice thing to hear. And I really feel that we came spot on with the whole vision for what it was going to be. This Easy X was a huge breath of fresh air, man. And it was so cool that uh, I don't know if this was premeditated or not, but it was perfect to be the first Easy X release right after Easy Drummer 3 came out. Yeah, I think we were both excited when we heard it was the first release. We were like, this is this is cool. It's uh, it's a good one. Uh, yeah, because it, because it, it's a start of a new sort of period for a new product. And uh, I think we did something a little bit different that's uh, usable in a lot of ways. You guys' time and energy for this interview was invaluable to me. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for visiting me mid tour, Darby, on your day off. No and I'm problem. sure Jacob mid, you know, project. <laughs> on the behalf of anyone watching this video, wave bye to everybody. Rock on, guys. Thanks so much See for you your later. time. Appreciate it.
I hope you enjoyed this interview. Do check the description of this video to watch episode 2 of this series with Jacob and Darby. I also have my big stage easy X overview video on my channel. Do subscribe and comment if you enjoyed this content. Rock on.